What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2010 R56 Mini Cooper S. Today, on the R56 behind me, we're going to be showing you how to replace your rear suspension. This DIY is going to be applicable to all R56 models, not just the S model behind me. In front of me, we have some Bilstein struts along with an OE install kit for the Mini. This is going to have everything that you need to do this job, including new bump stops, new hardware for the shock mounts, as well as the bolts that hold the shocks into place, new spring shims, and of course, two new struts. Today we opted to go with the Bilstein struts. However, we have other brands available like Saks and Kony, all on fcpeuro.com. Now, typically these are gonna last you anywhere from 60 to 100,000 miles. It really depends on the kind of driving that your vehicle sees. As these components age over time, they can get a little bit noisy and oftentimes they can get a little bit clunky. Any 60 to 100,000 miles, if you're starting to get a noisy, bumpy ride, then more than likely your shocks and or struts are worn out. Now, before we get started on this, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need to do this DIY. For this job, we have a couple torque wrenches. We have a half inch drive ratchet and three inch drive ratchet. We have a 13 and 18 millimeter socket, as well as a 17 for our lug bolts. Now over here we have CTA 7466, which is more of a specialty tool. It's a pass through socket set specifically designed for suspension work. If you do not have this tool set, not a big deal. You can sub these out for a 17 millimeter wrench and a five millimeter hex. That's gonna be used to counter hold and remove the top locking nut on your strut. Depending on what brand you have, that 17 millimeter may change. So just keep that in mind. If you're reusing some of the hardware, we recommend some medium strength Loctite. And then if you have a rusty vehicle like we do, a wire brush is always handy whenever you're trying to get to old hardware. And most importantly for this DIY is gonna be a spring compressor. If you do not have one of those at home, I suggest you just take all your hardware and your old strut over to an independent shop, have them disassemble and assemble your new struts, and then continue on with the DIY. And lastly, just a nice to have is an electric impact gun for removal of the lug bolts on the car. Now that we know what tools we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, today we're gonna to be working on the rear passenger side of the Mini. However, the steps are gonna be identical for both the driver's side and passenger side. We're working on the lift. If you're working along at home, which is super doable for this job, just make sure your vehicle is secured properly. And like I mentioned at the tool section, you have a free floor jack that you can move around, which will be maybe come in handy when we go to mount everything together. But to start, we have four 17 millimeter lug bolts to remove. If you are not using an impact, make sure you break these free before you jack up the vehicle, then you can go ahead and remove them after the fact. We have a 17 on our impact gun today. We're just gonna go ahead and zap them off. Now that we have the wheel off, we have a better view of what we're working with. The R56 chassis is super cool because the shock mount bolts are underneath the vehicle. You don't have to go inside and tear any interior paneling apart. And then we have one lower bolt down here that holds everything together. But before we get to that, let's head over on the inside of things. We have a couple items to disconnect from our strut body and then we can continue on removing the strut assembly. All right, my good people, to get started, we have a couple lines to remove from this tab tang on the strut assembly. We have our ABS and brake pad wear sensor cable that run through this top one. To remove it, simply we're gonna push it up and off, just like that. And that can just kind of hang out there. For the brake hose, same thing, it's got a rubber grommet that's hiding beneath that emergency uh, parking brake cable here, but that one's gonna pull towards us. Just like that. Now it's gonna be nice and free. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my screw jack underneath the trailing arm, just in case once we remove this bolt, I don't want everything to just kind of drop or vice versa, so we'll do that as insurance. If you're following along at home, this is where you're gonna wanna use your floor jack just to support everything as you remove this lower bolt just literally resting up against it. We're not putting any tension on it or anything like that. Simply just keeping it level. I'm gonna use a half inch ratchet. Might be a little bit overkill, but we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt now. This is an 18 millimeter. You always wanna do these by hand. You don't wanna use an impact. You can, believe it or not, strip them as you zap them out with a gun. So it's best to take it nice and slow. It's okay to reuse this bolt if you are. I just recommend you clean the threads up really well. Use a little bit of Loctite on there. You don't need to use you know, super strength, but just something mild just to keep them from backing out 
as they see a lot of impact over time. You're also gonna wanna note the orientation of the shock body. Here we have just a flat surface. I'll show you on the new strut assembly, uh, the built-in spacer that's gonna go in between the trailing arm and the strut. Just make sure you put them in the same way once more. And it's kind of hard to mess up. Your tangs are only facing one way for your ABS line and your brake line anyways, but it doesn't hurt to be cautious. All right, we're gonna remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the shock mount from the wheel well side of things. So I have my 13 on my ratchet. I'm gonna pull the front one out first and then I'll get the rear one. That's just the order I like to work in so I can use my hands and kind of work at the same time to get this out without dropping it. My forward bolt is a little bit crusty. I'm having a hard time getting the 13 on there. So I'm just gonna take a little wire brush and kind of clean up the head a bit. So if you run into the same issue, just take a moment, clean up the hardware, even though we're replacing it, just gonna make removing it a lot easier. Now we should be able to get our 13 on there and work it off. I have one hand on the bottom of the shock while I remove the last 13 millimeter bolt. Now we have our two 13s removed, we can drop the strut assembly. Just being mindful of our lines. Okay. Our strut assembly is out. We're gonna head over to the vise or the table and work on compressing our spring so we can reuse that with our new strut assembly. All right, my good people, over at the workbench, we're gonna work on stealing a couple parts off this old strut assembly. Most importantly is gonna be the coil spring and the shock plate, the new mounts kind of sandwich around that shock plate. So this is totally reusable. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and compress our spring. Now, if you've heard me say before, if you watch any of the other suspension videos we do, the most important thing is not hurting yourself while compressing any coil spring on any suspension job. If you don't have the proper tools to do this, take them to your local shop, have them disassemble it for you, bring them your new hardware, your new strut, and they can assemble them for you. The money that you're saving doing this DIY at home, you can put a little bit towards doing this the right way. If you do have the right tools, then let's go ahead and get to it. So first we're gonna start by compressing our coil spring so then we can remove the top mount safely. We have our coil spring compressor here ready to go. All right, the top mount feels nice and loose, meaning that there's no tension on it. Now we have our coil spring compressed. We can work on removing the top locking nut so we can remove all these components. We have a 17 millimeter nut on this old sax unit with a five millimeter hex for a counter hold. So we'll be using that pass through socket set like I mentioned at the beginning. If you don't have that, you can use a wrench and a regular Allen to kind of hold that shaft from spinning on you. That feels pretty loose. We should be able to get the rest of it off by hand. All right, we have our lock nut. We have our first washer. The curved, uh, the curved portion of it is gonna seat up against the top rubber bushing. Our kit comes with a new washer, so we'll be using that. Then we have the smaller top bushing of our strut mount. We have our plate. Now if you note the plate, it's got a raised section. The raised portion goes towards the inside of the mini. The lower section goes towards the outside, towards the wheel. So when you go to install it, you wanna make sure that the slanted lower portion is facing you. The raised section is facing the inside of the car, so it all bolts up nicely. Then we have our larger shock mount with the metal sleeve, which just fell out of it. Again, we're replacing both of these. Here's a good example of a used one, well used one versus a new one. You can see how much sandwiched the older one is and the new one. So that's why it's important to replace these. They may seem reusable, but they've fully compressed at this point. If they stay on there any longer, they're just gonna crumble. Then comes the top of our spring plate. This we're gonna reuse. Then we have our bump stop, this small washer which was sitting inside of the bump stop. Now that's something that we do not get with our new kit, so that we can go ahead and reuse. That just sits in here. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it over to the new one now, just like that. Then we have our bellow and spring shim. These, you could argue you could reuse, but for a few extra dollars, if you have the ability to, go ahead and replace them. Otherwise, feel free to clean them up and reuse them. We have a new set here, which we're gonna mate the same way these two are. You have your bellow, you have your spring shim, simply a cone sits over it like so. Then last but not least, we have our coil spring. And then on the old strut assembly, if you're reusing the shims, you're gonna wanna pull this old rubber shim off and transfer it over to your new strut. 
These old Saks units have a quote unquote mud guard on them. The new Bilsteins don't have an allocation for them, so we're gonna go ahead and leave these on here. But if your new struts have the option to transfer this over, it's just a plastic rivet, pop it off, transfer it over to your new strut. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and assemble our new strut. All right, we'll take our new strut body. We'll take our lower spring shim. We have a new one that comes with our install kit. Slide that over. And just seat it at the bottom. Make sure it seats all the way down, just like so. Now we can go ahead and slide our coil spring over. Or we'll slide the strut in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and install our bellow and spring pad shim combo. Note there is a small stop on the inside of that that's gonna butt up with the flat spot of the spring coil. So it kind of clocks into position. You wanna wanna keep it in that spot. With that on there, we can go ahead and sneak our new bump stop over. Again, we put that washer back in just like the factory one had. Beautiful. Don't worry about this dancing around on you. It's gonna be more important to keep it aligned once you're actually decompressing the spring. So not a huge deal if everything's dancing around. With that, we're gonna take the top of our spring perch plate here and just slide that over everything. There we go. One happy family, looking good. Moving forward, we have our lower shock mount bushing with the sleeve already in it that we popped in just a moment ago. We'll slide that over. Then we'll take our plate, slide that over the top. And we have the top portion of our bushing. There is a small cutout on it that's gonna face down towards the strut. That's gonna allow the other end of the bushing to seat inside of it, just like that. Then we take our new washer or old washer if you're reusing it. Again, curved spot facing the strut or the rest of the strut body. And then we'll take our new locking nut. Just get that started by hand. Now something I'm gonna do now is kind of align everything as it would go back in the vehicle. So we have the lower portion of our shock plate facing the wheel side of things. Same thing with the mounting side of the bottom of the strut that's gonna to go towards the wheel side of things. This is that funky spacer I was talking about earlier, which is gonna sit in between the rear trailing arm and the strut assembly. With those two like that, we can grab our pass-through socket set once more and our counter hold, same five millimeter hex and 17 millimeter socket. We'll just reverse the tools. And we're gonna snug this down pretty good. For those of you following along at home, if you wanna torque it, it's gonna to be about 30 Newton meters. We're just gonna use the ratchet today and snug them up pretty good. 30 Newton meters is not a whole lot, and we should be able to achieve that easily today using these two tools. That's gonna be good there. And just one last check, making sure everything's aligned. Now we can undo the spring compressor. And just like that, we have a new strut assembly ready for install. So let's meet back over at the R56, and we'll install this bad boy back in the car. All right, my good people, we are ready to install our new strut. Now, one thing I fudged up a little bit at the table was the orientation of the plate. The lower portion, if you will, of the plate is gonna face out towards the wheel, the raised section towards the inside of the vehicle. So just do a 180 on the plate. Now we can go ahead and feed it. And we're gonna line up the two holes so that we can start our new 13 millimeter bolts. Now we have both 13 started by hand. We can go ahead and snug them up all the way using our 13 millimeter socket and ratchet. We're gonna to torque both of our 13s down to 56 Newton meters. All right, now that we have the top of the strut mount secured on the vehicle, let's get underneath and we'll install our lower bolt, run our lines and get one step closer to wrapping up this DIY. Back under the mini, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our lower strut bolt that goes into the trailing arm. This design's really nice, the metal bushing that sits between the strut and the trailing arm keys into the bottom of the trailing arm, which is kind of cool. You also want to make sure if you didn't already that your brake line and ABS line are still on the proper side of the strut body. So we're gonna get our strut into position. 
We have our lower bolt, which we've cleaned up and added a little bit of medium strength Loctite to it. Again, if you're using it, I recommend you do that. And we'll start it by hand. You always want to start these by hand. They are going into aluminum. The last thing you want to do is strip it. Now we've got a few threads on. We'll grab our 18 millimeter socket and our ratchet and we'll just snug it up. All right, now we're gonna grab our torque wrench and give it a final torque of 165 Newton meters. Beautiful. While we have you down here, we'll go ahead and reinstall our soft brake line and ABS cable back into the tab on the strut. Now that both of those are secured, let's head back out front. We'll put our wheel on and wrap up this DIY. Always start your lug bolts or lug nuts by hand. The last thing you wanna do is cross thread them I'm just gonna use the impact just to snug them up. Then we'll drop it down and give it the final torque. With our car back on the ground, we can go ahead and give the lug bolts the final torque. We have the torque wrench set to 90 foot pounds or 122 Newton meters. And bam, baby, that's another DIY in the books. Overall, a really straightforward process on the R56 chassis. Again, the most tedious and annoying thing is just compressing the coil spring. But other than that, pretty doable job. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, if there's a specific job you want to see us do on this chassis, leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.